In 1970, while the rest of the automotive world was talking about smaller, more efficient engines, Cadillac engineers were busy creating an absolute monster. The Cadillac 500 cubic inch V8 wasn't just big, it was officially the largest displacement production engine ever built for passenger cars. We're talking about an engine bigger than most modern truck motors, stuffed into luxury sedans and coupes. This is the story of how Cadillac's pursuit of ultimate luxury performance led them to build the most massive engine in automotive history, just years before everything changed forever. Sometimes timing is everything in the car business. To understand why Cadillac built a 500 cubic inch monster, you need to picture the late 1960s luxury car battlefield. This wasn't just about transportation, it was about status, prestige, and proving you'd made it in America. Cadillac was locked in an all-out war with Lincoln and Imperial for the hearts, minds, and wallets of luxury car buyers. The philosophy was simple, more is more. Bigger cars, more chrome, more power, more everything. American luxury customers didn't want efficient or subtle. They wanted cars that announced their success from three blocks away. Cadillac had been winning this battle for years, but by the late 1960s, the competition was getting serious. Lincoln was launching bigger engines, Imperial was pushing luxury features, and suddenly Cadillac's dominance wasn't guaranteed. In this environment, building the world's largest engine wasn't just logical, it was essential for maintaining their crown. By 1969, Cadillac faced a problem that would seem ridiculous today. Their engines weren't big enough. Lincoln had just launched their massive 460 cubic inch V8, and it was making Cadillac's 472 look almost modest by comparison. For a brand built on being the standard of the world, this was unacceptable. But the real issue went deeper than just bragging rights. Cadillacs were getting heavier every year as customers demanded more luxury features, air conditioning, and safety equipment. The 472nd, while powerful, was starting to feel strained under the weight of these rolling living rooms. Luxury buyers expected effortless acceleration, the kind of power that could merge onto highways without breaking a sweat, regardless of how many passengers or how much cargo was aboard. GM executives made it clear, Cadillac needed to reclaim the displacement crown and prove they could build the most powerful luxury cars in America. The directive was simple, but ambitious. Build the biggest production engine ever created. Cadillac's engineers didn't start from scratch when tasked with creating the world's largest production engine. They had a solid foundation in their existing 472 cubic inch V8, which was already a sophisticated piece of machinery. But stretching displacement from 472 to 500 cubic inches wasn't just a matter of boring cylinders bigger and calling it a day. The challenge was pushing the physical limits of what was possible within a production car engine block. Engineers had to carefully balance bore diameter against stroke length, ensuring the block could handle the stress without cracking under normal use. They increased the bore to 4.30 inches and stretched the stroke to 4.304 inches, creating exactly 500 cubic inches of displacement. But Cadillac didn't just want big, they wanted sophisticated big. The 500 featured advanced hydraulic valve lifters, a high-performance camshaft, and precision-balanced rotating assembly. The engineering team spent months testing durability, ensuring this massive engine could deliver the smooth, reliable operation luxury customers expected. This wasn't a race engine masquerading as a street motor. It was a genuine luxury power plant that just happened to be enormous. When Cadillac unveiled the 500 cubic inch V8 in 1970, the luxury car world took notice. This wasn't just another engine option, it was a statement of intent. Cadillac marketed it as the world's largest production automobile engine, and they weren't exaggerating. At exactly 500 cubic inches, it dwarfed everything else on the road. The numbers were impressive even by today's standards. The 500 produced 400 horsepower and a massive 550 pound-feet of torque, figures that made Lincoln's 460 look almost modest. But more importantly, it delivered the kind of effortless power that luxury customers craved. Highway merging became a non-event, and passing power was virtually unlimited. Initially, the 500 between 1970 and 1976 
the Cadillac 500 cubic inch V8 represented the absolute pinnacle of American automotive excess. During these six years, Cadillac produced hundreds of thousands of these massive engines, making the 500 not just the largest production engine ever built, but also one of the most successful in terms of sales volume. The 500's reach expanded far beyond its initial Eldorado application. By 1971, it was available across Cadillac's entire full-size lineup, including the DeVille, Calais, and massive Fleetwood limousines. Customers could order a four-door sedan with seating for six and an engine larger than most modern sports cars. It was peak American automotive philosophy. Why build it smaller when you could build it bigger? Production numbers tell the story of the 500's success. In 1971 alone, Cadillac built over 266,000 cars with the vast majority powered by the 500 cubic inch monster. These weren't limited production specialty vehicles. They were mainstream luxury cars that regular wealthy Americans bought and drove daily. Your neighbor's Cadillac probably had an engine bigger than a modern Corvette. Customer reactions were overwhelmingly positive. The 500 delivered exactly what luxury buyers wanted, silent, effortless power that made every drive feel effortless. Highway cruising at 80 miles per hour felt like idling. Passing slower traffic required barely touching the accelerator. The engine's massive torque output meant it never felt strained regardless of load or driving conditions. The competition scrambled to respond, but nobody could match Cadillac's displacement crown. Lincoln's 460 remained respectable but second best. Chrysler's Imperial limped along with smaller engines that couldn't compete on pure cubic inches. For six glorious years, Cadillac owned the displacement wars completely. During this period, the 500 underwent continuous refinement. Engineers improved fuel metering, enhanced durability, and fine-tuned performance characteristics. By 1976, the final year of production, the 500 had become a remarkably sophisticated engine that just happened to be enormous. The death of the Cadillac 500 wasn't caused by engineering failure or customer dissatisfaction. Instead, it was killed by a perfect storm of external forces that made massive displacement engines suddenly obsolete practically overnight. The 1973 oil crisis hit first and hardest. When gas prices doubled and lines formed at stations nationwide, owning a 500 cubic inch engine went from status symbol to financial liability. Customers who had bragged about their massive Cadillacs suddenly found themselves embarrassed at gas stations. Simultaneously, the EPA introduced strict emissions regulations that choked the life out of big engines. The 500's power output plummeted from 400 horsepower to barely 190 by 1975, as engineers struggled to meet pollution standards. Meanwhile, the newly implemented corporate average fuel economy standards meant every 500 cubic inch engine sold made it harder for GM to meet government-mandated fleet fuel economy targets. Insurance companies delivered the final blow, dramatically increasing premiums for large displacement engines. By 1976, the regulatory environment had become so hostile that continuing production was financial suicide. The 500's reign ended not with mechanical failure, but with changing times that no amount of cubic inches could overcome. The Cadillac 500 cubic inch V8 achieves something that will never be repeated in automotive history. It holds the official record as the largest displacement production engine ever built for passenger cars. This isn't just a footnote in automotive trivia, it's a genuine engineering milestone that stands unchallenged nearly 50 years later. Beyond the record books, the 500 fundamentally shaped Cadillac's engineering philosophy for decades. The lessons learned from building and refining such a massive engine influenced everything from block design to fuel delivery systems in future Cadillac powertrains. Even when displacement shrank dramatically in the 1980s, the sophisticated engineering approaches developed for the 500 lived on. Today, the 500 has achieved legendary status among collectors and enthusiasts. Original examples command serious money at auctions, with numbers matching 1970 to 1971 Eldorados selling for six-figure sums. The engine represents the absolute peak of American automotive ambition, built during the brief window when regulations hadn't yet constructed. Looking at the Cadillac 500 from today's perspective raises a fascinating question. Could any manufacturer build a 500 cubic inch production engine in the modern era? The short answer is absolutely not. 
And it's not just about technology or capability. Modern engines achieve more power from half the displacement through turbocharging, direct injection, and variable valve timing. A current Cadillac CT5V Blackwing produces 668 horsepower from just 376 cubic inches, making the 500's original 400 horsepower seem almost quaint. Today's engineering focuses on efficiency over brute force displacement. But the real barriers are regulatory and environmental. Current CAFE standards would make a 500 cubic inch engine financially impossible for any manufacturer. The gas guzzler tax alone would add thousands to the sticker price, while emissions regulations would require so much equipment that the engine would be strangled into irrelevance. The automotive world has also fundamentally shifted toward electrification. Tesla's Model S Plaid produces over 1,000 horsepower with zero displacement, making cubic inches seem like ancient history. Future luxury cars will be measured in kilowatts, not cubic inches. Perhaps most importantly, consumer priorities have changed completely. Modern luxury buyers want technology, efficiency, and environmental responsibility. The bigger is better mentality that created the 500 died with the muscle car era, making such excess impossible to justify or market today. The Cadillac 500 cubic inch V8 stands as a monument to a specific moment in automotive history when ambition had no limits and regulations hadn't yet caught up with engineering dreams. For six brief years, Cadillac built the largest production engine ever created, and it's a record that will never be broken. The timing was everything. The 500 emerged at the exact intersection of American prosperity, luxury car wars, and technological capability just before the oil crisis and emissions regulations changed everything forever. It represents the last hurrah of unlimited displacement, the final moment when engineers could build an engine as big as they wanted simply because they could. Today, the 500 serves as both inspiration and cautionary tale. It shows what's possible when engineering ambition runs unchecked, but also demonstrates how quickly external forces can make even the most impressive achievements obsolete. In our modern world of hybrid powertrains and electric motors, the idea of a 500 cubic inch production engine seems almost mythical. The Cadillac 500 wasn't just the biggest engine ever built. It was the end of an era. Sometimes the greatest achievements happen right before everything changes forever.